So we go to Ric Flair versus Mr. Perfect, and I actually thought to myself, my God, they're going to do this match, and then the Bushwhackers are going to follow them. Mm-hmm. No. That's not what happened. There were no Bushwhackers no. in this show. False advertising. So, <laughs> so this is like a famous match. And like heralded as a like one of the great matches of 1993, and you go back and watch it, and it goes. It's a long match. It goes through two commercial segments, but everything up to that second commercial break is adequate. It's a dude two star match. The first two segments of this match, I think they called this entire match in the ring. From looking at it, mm-hmm. sure. And uh, we were talking about how the announcers were bored in the opener. But uh, in this particular match right here, they're about uh, three minutes in, and uh, Vince is starting to get pissed off. Yes. And he's talking about how somebody needs to do something here. It's better being too defensive. It's Ric Flair and and, and Mr. Perfect, and they're going to go however many minutes they went, so they start slow. And they Mm -hmm. stand and they look at each other for a long time. And they do a lockup, and then they go back to the corner, and they do a slap spot, and then they separate, and they look at each other. And Vince is like, he wants his fucking shit to get exciting here. He's paying this fucking guy one more time, so let's get this shit on the road. So uh, from there, it's like, it is, I don't want to say it was, you know what I would say? Every now and then I go, you get two guys, and it's impossible for them to have a bad match. Like, if they go in and try to have a bad match, it's still going to be, like, a fine match because they're both so fucking good. They can't possibly have a bad match. That's Mr. Perfect and Ric Flair. Yep. But the first two commercials, the first two segments that they did, if they had 100 matches, literally 99 of them would be better than this match. I can't imagine these two having a worse match but it was still a good match because it's Ric Flair and Mr. Perfect. They fucking were botching spots. Mm-hmm. There was some spot coming off the ropes where yeah. they both didn't know what they were doing and and they just fell down. And so, like, the, I will give them this. The moment they fell down, they just went right to a chin lock and they didn't panic. They didn't rush. They just laid there for a while. Right. And then they went to the next spot. F- Flair was running off the ropes. Perfect went to leapfrog frog him and Flair didn't duck. Yes. And so he just kind of collapsed and fell to the mat, and Perfect says, well, my arm's around his head. I'll grab him. And it was also weird because there were there were at least two spots, and probably many more, but I noticed two of them, uh, where Mr. Perfect was so clearly uh, feeding Rick, and Rick didn't take the bait. Like, there was one spot where something happened in the corner, and uh, and Perfect turns around and so his ass is towards Flair, and he just leans over and he puts his hands on his knees. He's waiting for Flair to do the chop block. Flair doesn't do the chop block. He just walks around to the other side of Perfect and then does some other spot. Then there's another spot where uh, Perfect, uh, he sells his leg, and he starts grabbing the rope and limping over by the ropes. And you know exactly what he wants. Flair yeah. kicks his leg, and he does the flip bump and lands in his head. Flair don't do it. So... This whole match was just like, you could not have had a worse match between these two guys. But then after the second commercial break, it actually turned into a great match. Yeah. The last thing I want to mention about this middle segment here is there's a point where uh, Mr. Perfect is doing the mounted punches in the corner. And for all the terrible things they do with the camera these days, I haven't seen this one before. They're filming this, and it's just like the guy, I think the guy was in the apron, he may have been on the floor. But just looking up at Mr. Perfect as Mr. Perfect rains down punches on Flair's head. And then the camera slowly rotates 90 degrees. And so now it looks like Flair is on his back and Perfect is punching him. And it stays there. I don't know why they did that. So we go to our second commercial break, and I'm like baffled about how this match is merely there. And then the third segment, it's like three or four minutes of great, great, great wrestling. And Perfect is no selling. They're just chopping the piss out of each other. And Flair is trying pins with his feet in the ropes, but he gets takes the big giant backdrop of death and or he goes for a backdrop and perfect grabs him by the head and hits the perfect plex out of nowhere to win and like i say this last three minutes were awesome it was amazing because uh you know the fa- the fans were up and down for the match but man as soon as flair sent him off those ropes and put his head down for the backdrop as soon as perfect hooked him this fucking place got on their feet because they knew it was coming and he hits that perfect plex. And back in those days, he ain't kicking out of a finisher on Monday Night Raw. No. <laughs> and he hit that perfect plex. One, two, three. Flair got pinned. And uh, you know what's the most amazing thing about this entire show? And I'm talking, I couldn't even believe my fucking ears from this company. They go to break and they come back. And Vince McMahon says, 
Ric Flair will be finishing up his weekend commitments. Mm-hmm. And then it's all downhill it's for all him. It's all downhill for Which, Rick of course, Flair. talking about him going to WCW. But I was amazed that they were like, we've advertised this guy. And so we are going to give you what we advertised. Whereas nowadays, they could not possibly give a fuck less about whether they advertise something and deliver. It's like, we're just going to advertise shit. I couldn't even tell you how many times we're going to advertise a match for Raw. We have one thing advertised for Raw, and they don't do it. It's not like they advertise the Bushwhackers and three other matches, and then they don't do the Bushwhackers. They literally fucking will advertise one thing for Raw and not deliver. They're, they have no... They don't give two fucks. They got your money. They don't care. Back then, if you bought your tickets to see Ric Flair this weekend, even though he has to leave the company, he's going to be there to give you your money's worth. I was stunned. What the fuck's happened to this place? And the weirdest thing in this match is how Perfect ended up getting color. Uh, Rick f- whipped him into the turnbuckle, and Perfect hit the turnbuckle and then slid down the pole. He threw himself back, and then basically his head was heading straight for the apron, and he tucked, and they the announcer said he hit his head on the pole. I didn't see that, um, but he come up and 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 he was he was bloody. Um, he went a, down that pole like a fireman, except upside, upside down. down. Upside down. Yeah. That Bad way so to go weird. down the pole, by the way. <laughs> Understood. Yeah. It was strange, but when you miss per- Mister Perfect, you do whatever you want. There was one a, a different spot in the match. It, it, it wasn't important, so you may not have like even registered it. But I've seen a lot of guys get whipped into the corner, and they either they go like chest first, like Bret Hart, and bump to their back, or so mm-hmm. you, you you hit it with your back really hard, your feet go flying up, you bounce out and land on your back. Flair goes into the corner, back first, and then takes a front flip bump. Or is that perfect? Perfect did that, yeah. Yes. I've seen him do that a million times. Well, he did it again. I don't know why he does it. It's weird. My, my favorite thing is when he gets his head thrown into the turnbuckle, and he'll jump up and with his feet will land on the bottom rope and then do a half gainer yes. Yes. and then do a flip in the air. Yes. So... That's it. There's no uh, big post-match promo or angle or anything. Just the match ends and Flair's gone and Vince's is all downhill. Stick around, folks. You'll want to see the match we announced for next week. Roman Reigns versus Edge for the title. Sorry, Brian. What the hell's going on over there? (laughs) Got a text. My bad. It plays a song for a text? Brian, move along. Who here in the chat can name that tune? (laughs) Yeah, that's this person I'm says it sounds like faith with that one guy. <laughs> we got to have one faith, guy. Yeah, whatever his name was. His name is George Michael. George Michael, that's right. Yes. I was gonna say Shawn Michaels. No. If you enjoy these videos for just seven dollars and ninety nine cents per month, you can enjoy full length editions of the Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.